Welcome. Last time we learned how to multiply two binomials together. Remember where we took like x plus 3 and we times it by x minus 2 and you do the FOIL method, the rainbow method, or some other type of method where you do first times first, which gives you the x squared, first times last, which gives you negative 2x, last times first, which gives you 3x, and last times last, which gives you minus 6. The two middle terms seem to always be like terms that can combine, and we write our final solution as x squared plus x minus 6, because the negative 2x plus 3x is a 1x. And we have this trinomial. What we're going to learn to do today is to go the other direction. Given this trinomial, how do I separate it into two binomials? Now, before I do that, though, I want to emphasize that anytime you're factoring a, a polynomial, you got to see if there's anything in common with all the terms. In other words, what we call factor out a monomial. So I'm going to look at these really quickly and just make sure that you, this is always the very first step when you factor uh, polynomials is to look at the two terms. So we might have this expression 2z cubed plus 6z, and we want to say, all right, what's in common with both of these? So we're going to do the reverse distributive property. Both the 2 and the 6 are even, so that means they both have a factor of 2. Both these terms have at least a z. This has one z, this has three z's. So I can factor out a two z from both of these terms. Now I'm dividing them out, so two divided by two would be one. Z cubed divided by z would leave a z squared. And then I have my plus symbol. And then six divided by two leaves a three. And z divided by z is one, which I don't write. That would be the factored form of that, um, this binomial here when you're just factoring out the largest common factor. So, and then you just type it in, making sure you hit the right variables, z squared plus three, and submit. So you're gonna, I want you to do this a few times, so I'm gonna sign this lesson because I want you to get in the habit of the very first thing you always do is you look for anything that's in common with both terms. Both terms are even again, so I factor out a two. Both terms have a c, so I factor out the c, leaving a two divided by two is one. c squared divided by c leaves one c. Six divided by two is three, so I have a minus three. The c cancels, or c divided by c is one, and we get this expression right here. So we get two c, in outside the parentheses and c minus 3 inside the parentheses. So again, you're going to be doing a bunch of these. I'm going to jump ahead here a little bit just to see if how hard they get. See so like this one here. Again, always try to factor out the greatest common factor. So for instance, um, both the 15, the t to the fourth minus 30t cubed, both of these have a factor of 3. I can factor out a three, but there's more. They both have a factor of five as well. Or in other words, this 15 goes into 30. So you're gonna factor out 15, and then this has three t's, this has four t's, so they have a total of three t's in common. So I'm factoring out the 15 divided by 15, which is one. t to the fourth divided by t cubed will leave a single t. The 30 divided by 15 leaves a two. The t cubed divided by t cubed goes away and that's our factored form. So be sure to always factor out the greatest common factor. Don't settle for something smaller, otherwise you will get it incorrect. Now, this one should be, be pretty straightforward and pretty easy and go pretty quickly. What I want to now do is go over factoring uh, quadratics with a leading coefficient of one. Now, before we do that, I want to go back and I want to show you this one that I did here. This x plus 3 times the x minus 2. What I want you to realize is that this last term here came by multiplying these two terms together. Gave me negative 6. And no, there was no like terms with it, so just that times that gave me this last term. This middle term, this 1x, 
came by adding these two numbers after I multiplied by these x's. So I had a negative 2x's and I have a positive 3x's. So when I add these two, I get a positive 1x. So this negative 6 came by multiplying these two last terms. This middle term came by adding them. And that's the way we're going to factor a lot of these things. We're going to look for factors. So when we go into this one, factoring a quadratic with a leading coefficient of 1, you're going to have something like this, where we have, as soon as it loads, okay, m squared plus 7m plus 10. You're going to start by focusing on the last term. Start with the last term and write its factor pairs. In other words, 1 times 10 is 10. That's not the only two numbers that multiply to give me 10. 2 times 10, times 10, yeah, sure, that gives me 20. 2 times 5 is 10, right? And then you'll look at these factors and say, well, if I added 1 and 10, do I get the middle term? Well, I don't. 1 plus 10 is not 7. But when I add 2 and 5, do I get 7? Yes, I do. So the two factors of 10 that add to give me 7 are 2 and 5. So when we factor this, all we need to do, now this works because this is a leading coefficient of 1. That's what that means. There's no number here. We're going to talk about that next time. But when there's no number here, we just take the two numbers that multiply to give me this and add to give me that. And you write them behind. And it doesn't matter which you do first. I could have done the 2 here, and I could have done the 5 here. But then you do an m plus and an m plus. Now, you can always verify this gives you that by doing the FOIL method that we did last time. m times m is m squared. m times 2 would be a plus 2m. The last times the first, or 5 times m, would be 5m. And the last times the last would give me 10. Lo and behold, these two middle terms add, and I get 7m plus 10, which is what I had up here. So this is the factored form. So I come over here, do parentheses, m plus 5. Now remember, I want to emphasize again, it doesn't matter if I do the 2 first or the 5 first, uh, plus 2. So I could have done the m plus 2 parentheses first. Order of multiplication doesn't matter. Hit submit, and we did it great. Now. I'm going to jump ahead because I want to make sure I see some ones that have uh, minus signs and some of the ones that are a little more difficult. And it's obviously going to give me all plus symbols. So, okay, so I'll hurry and quickly do this one just so it jumps ahead. But again, as an example of how to do this one, you take that. So we have a j squared plus 14j plus 24. Ignore the middle term for the moment and just take this last term, 24, and do factors. A lot of times I'll do it like this. Now, you're not doing the complete factor tree. You just want two numbers that multiply to give you 24. And if all else fails, start with 1 and 24. Then go to, is 2 go into 24? It does. So do 2 and 12. Does 3 go into 24? It does. 3 and 8. Does 4 go into 24? It does. 4 and 6. Does 5? Nope. And then we're back to 6. And then you say, all right, which two give me multiply to give me 24, but now which of the two add to give me 14? All of them multiply to give me 24, but only one of them adds to 14. That happens to be this one. So the 2 and the 12 is what this is going to factor into. So I come down here and I put a J plus 2 and a J plus 12. And again, I could have did the 12 first and the 2. And again, if you're unsure, Foil it back together to make sure you've done it correctly. So I got a J plus 2 and a J plus 12. And then close your parentheses. Make sure you put them in both in parentheses and you hit submit. Okay, now here's one with the negative. Okay, now you got to be careful when it comes to negatives that you got to think, okay, one of these factors or both of them will have to be negative. Not those ones specifically. Let's do the actual problem f squared minus 12f plus 11. 
So again, I'm going to ignore the negative 12 for a minute. And I'm going to see and take that last one, that 11. And over here, I'm going to think of the numbers that multiply. But luckily, 11 is prime. The only thing that multiplies 11 is 1 and 11. But the problem is, if I leave them both positive, I'll never get a negative sum. But if I make one of them negative, I will never get a positive product. So this is one of those times, if I have a positive uh, third term and a negative middle term, they're actually both negative. Both the factors are negative. So a negative of 1 times a negative 11 is going to give me a positive 11. But a negative 1 plus a negative 11 will give me the negative 12. So that factors to an F minus 1 times an F minus 11. Now again, I could have done the 11 first. Um, again, F minus 11, F minus 1. The order that I put those two in doesn't matter. It will work. Right. So again, if that last term is positive and the middle term is negative, both the factors of 4, so I'm going to take that 4 and I'm going to think, okay, what two factors of 4? Uh, you know, I have 1 times 4 and I have 2 times 2, but they're both negatives to give me that positive product, that positive product here of the third term, but they're adding the two negatives gives me that negative sum. And obviously the negative 1 and the negative 4 work. So that would be an m minus 1 and an m minus 4 to give me that factored form. m minus 1, m minus 4. Now there are times, I was hoping to reach one where, yes, like this one, where you're going to have both a positive and a negative factor. So again, if I take this u squared plus 24u minus 25, if you'll notice my third term now is negative. So its product has to have a negative factor. And I take that negative 25 and I say, all right, 1 and 25 multiply to give me 25. 5 and 5 multiply to give me 25. Nothing else does. One of these two factors has to be negative. Now, the way I decide which one's negative is, is the sum positive or negative? If the sum is positive, then the smaller has to be negative. If this had been a negative 24, then I would have made the larger one positive. Actually, 5 and 5 are the same. But So hopefully you see right off the bat that these are the two factors that when I multiply them together, give me the negative 25. But when I add them, 25 plus negative 1 gives me a positive 24. So this would factor to a u minus 1 times a u plus 25. And so I come over here and I type in u minus 1, u plus 25. Hopefully this makes some sense. Again, if you need to re-watch the video, I know some of you say you struggle watching videos. Um, but you can always log on at 1 o'clock or let me know. Again, one more just for safekeeping here. Again, I'm going to take that negative 6. I'm going to say, all right, 1 and 6 multiply to give me 6. 2 and 3 multiply to give me 6. Since the sum is positive, the smaller numbers will be the negatives to give me that negative product, but a sum of a positive number, and then which to add up to give me a 1. Remember, if you don't see any number in front of the variable, it's a 1. So these two add up to 1, but multiply to give me negative 6. So I get k minus 2 and k plus 3. Again, the order I type those in doesn't matter. So I'm going to, just to show you, I'm going to type in the k plus 3 first, and then the k minus 2, k minus 2, and we're doing great. Again, if you have questions, please contact me, and I will help you.